Huawei's Mate 30 Pro flagship Android 10 phone is in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. The fact that it has a huge hurdle to overcome, that it does not ship with Google Play services and you cannot use the Google installer anymore to get the App Store on there. You need to find workarounds to use third-party app stores or download manually the APK files and install them. Now apart from that, this phone does have some fantastic hardware but the software side, as you'll see in my review, does definitely need some improvements. So I got this phone here from Trading Shenzhen and they included also a Type-C to USB adapter for me and a power plug adapter. Now we get the 40 watt supercharger here from Huawei and this is really quick. So it fully charges the phone in just one hour and 10 minutes approximately. We get some Type-C headphones because they obviously realize that a lot of people won't have Type-C headphones, which is good that they've included that. They're not particularly high quality ones. And then of course our cable. Now the phone does also have in the box a case for it. And it's one of those clear style ones you can see right here. So it gives you minimal protection, especially with the curved edges. They've got that all open. But of course, it's better having this than nothing. All right, so let's take a look at the build and design of the phone here. Now, this looks like it had a Xeon flash. And it did actually fool me when I first saw those leaked images of the Mate 30 Pro. The camera bulge, okay, this sticks out about 1.5 millimeters. A little you can see when I put it side on. And it's okay, you get used to it. It looks a little bit ugly, but really this is just the future of phones and we're just gonna have to go with it, really. We've got no other choice here. So the curved edges around the back here are very similar to the way the P30 Pro is, as you can see right here with my P30 Pro. They're about the same size. Uh, P30 Pro is just a little tiny fraction narrower. Now the weight of this phone is 199 grams. It is approximately nine millimeters thick. So it's not exactly super thin, but that's because it's housing the 4,500 minute hour battery within it. When you take a look at the bottom of the phone here, you'll see here we've got the SIM tray and your Type-C port, microphone and antenna lines, pretty much exactly like the P30 Pro. They're almost identical there, but they've gone with now this glossy metal frame around the outside with the finish on it. If we have a look at how this wears, because I wanted to point out that my P30 Pro already has a couple of little chips off on the paint job. So that paint job is probably why they went with a different sort of finish on this one. Now look at the edges of the phone here. We've got a fingerprint reader of course. You can see it's very quick. Just do that again. So it's about a second or so to unlock. But look at the edges here. Very, very, very curved. And okay, it gives it maybe a bit of a better feel in hand. That's the one positive we get here. The power button is off-centered. It's not really an issue. I've got easy access to it like that. I can get to it, I can turn it on. I'll just demonstrate face unlocking as well while I'm at it. And you can see that takes about a second or so, under a second. So it's more secure than the 2D face unlocking. It is really, really quick. So we take a look at the screen here. We've got a very good maximum brightness of about 520 lux. Well, I say very good, but it's actually falling behind other flagships. So take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, for example. Take a look at also the recently reviewed in the channel Republic of Gamers 2. That's got a thousand lux brightness. It's falling behind a little bit there, but the chin at the bottom is very nice and small. Ugly top notch that I'm not a big fan of with a 32 megapixel camera right there. And we've got no physical volume buttons anymore. So how do you trigger them? It's very hit and miss, I find, especially when you're in an application or you're gaming. So you have to, someone said to me, just got to tap and hold. Well, that doesn't actually work. Clearly, you don't have the phone, but you've got to double tap and then slide it up and down to control it. It can be done from both sides of the screen, as you can see, but it's hit and miss. There we go. Okay, firmware updates will, of course, approve upon that. Now, are you getting a lot of accidental touches with having such crazy edges on the screen here? Well, not really, okay? It's not really too much of an issue. I think the software's doing a good job to help avoid that. In terms of screen quality, it's a step down from the Mate 20 Pro because it's not 1440p anymore. And I find it's similar to my Huawei P30 Pro. If we take a look very quickly at my Samsung Galaxy S10, I still believe that this one has the far superior panel. Of course, it does have a higher resolution, brightness is better. And really, if you look at the sizes there, you can see the thickness, slightly thicker, of the Mate 30 Pro here. Now, when we take a look at the gamma of the screen, it's approximately 2.3 or leading towards a little bit 2.4 there, which is not bad. 2.2 is ideal here, but you can see the top shadow, the darkness we're getting at the top right on the edge. And if I move it and shift it now, you'll see the 
color is shifting. Well, the brightness of the whites here at the bottom, see how this is angled now towards the camera, it looks lighter. So you're gonna get a bit of that on the edges. The same thing is happening with my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus to a certain degree here. And it's just something that we're gonna have, of course, with these OLED panels and the fact they're using the waterfall style edges to me is just pushing the limits a little bit too much here having such a curvature and this phone of course will be a lot more fragile than say the flat screen we have on the mate 30 which i also happen to have right here this one with the flat screen i think is just going to be so much more resistant to drops and a very similar build on this one as well check my video for the comparison of these two phones Okay, so onto the performance of the phone, the ROM. So it is running Android 10. It's on EMUI 10 as well. And no, we do not have Google Play Store. You cannot install it at the moment at the time of this video. Hopefully there's going to be a way around this. Hopefully later on, Huawei, things will ease up relations uh, with the US, with Google, and then we'll give them permission and they can just push out a firmware update that will include it. So hold off on buying this phone, I would say, until you can see a sound method of installing that. So I've got Full screen gestures on at the moment. I'm not seeing any lag or stutters or issues, which is great. So if I just swipe up here and hold, uh, that's the way you can multitask just like other manufacturers using gestures. Very smooth performance and really no issues. So the toggles from the top, typical, used to slide down. You can see everything there. Now, because I don't have a physical volume down and up button, I normally take a screenshot, screen grab by holding volume down and power at the same time. So I've got to use the toggle here now for that. So I guess it's been handy that it's there. There is a gaming mode too, which I will show you later on in the gaming review of this video. So let's take a look at a few things. So I'm on the latest firmware update. At the time of this video, remember, this is a retail unit. It's a Chinese import version. So if this is eventually re released in Europe, you'll have a way more mature firmware than what this is right now that I'm currently running. One that will fix bugs because I'm seeing bugs with the camera, even though this did improve the camera performance. As you'll see later on, there is an issue with 4K 60 frames per second video are dropping huge amounts of frames. So Play Store, I do have it on this phone, but as mentioned, it's completely blocked out to us now, which is a real shame. There is a bit of bloatware too as well that is pre-installed. Now this will vary between the European release and whenever that comes, of course, and the Chinese one, they just cram a little bit more on there for them. So you're able to hide that ugly notch at the top if you're not happy with it. I'm not a huge fan of notches at all. And I think that they could have even put an ultra wide camera in here since they put such a wide notch on here. But hey, we've got the 3D more secure unlocking there. So you can also hide the edges too if you're not happy with the curvature of the screen and the way that as you can see, even right now, again, as I showed you in the beginning, how the color does shift out. And that's not really great and you can just make it black if you wanted to. So Google's Play Protect, which is basically like a virus scanner, it's not shown here, but there's an application called WPS Office. It flagged for some reason, and that came pre-installed on the phone, which is not good to see. I ended up removing it, of course. So Wide Vine Level 1 cert is not here, and this means that Netflix, Amazon Prime, any video streaming service will now be stuck in standard definition until they sort that out. So wireless speeds, very, very good here, okay? My line is 600 megabits per second max. And this was close to the router, the maximum speeds I could get. I move over to the other side of the studio here. I'm still able to get close to 200 megabits per second, which has to be about one of the fastest from that distance. So very, very good speeds there, really happy with that. Same goes for the internal storage. So UFS 3 spec, which is extremely quick, so much faster than eMMC 5.1. And you can see there, 1700 reads. Sequential writes are kind of low, but that's just how it is with the storage. But the main thing is the read speeds, of course, and your random writes and random reads, they are good too there as well. So very quick storage. And 2 score, not bad at all. It's not the highest I've seen because I think it's the Snapdragon uh, 855 Plus now that I reviewed is getting scores that are quite a bit higher than this one, but it's a big step up over the previous generation in terms of GPU. We're getting about 20,000 or so points more. In my comparison video between the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro here, you'll see the difference of that and compared to the Kirin 980 if you're interested in that. GPS working really well, okay? Locks onto a huge amount of satellites. In use here, you can see 34. Hardware compass, of course. Accuracy will stay about four meters which is not the most accurate I have actually seen. I've seen two meters, 
and I think that was on the Realme 3 Pro that had very good and accurate GPS. So the 4G plus speeds here of my carrier, this was orange I believe it is that I was using the SIM, SIM card and yeah terrible, <laughs> not good speeds but hey the range, sorry the reception, call quality and signal strength all good there so I didn't have any issues with that. Now there are air gestures if you are into that sort of thing, you know you can move your hand up and down and that will scroll on pages in the internet but to me it's kind of pointless because if your hands already here scrolling why can't you touch the screen? I just think it's um, really just a bit of a gimmick here. So that's there if you're into that. Always on display too as well. And then our battery life. So I haven't completed fully the battery life test here, but this is just an estimate like all my videos, okay? I used the screen continually, the phone on all the time. So it was set to 200 lux of brightness. And here's my result, almost eight hours with 20% left. So most phones with this capacity now, 4,000 million hours, I'm seeing almost with this test around about 10, 11 hours. I believe that this phone will be able to get about 11 hours of screen on time, maybe even a little more because I was gaming a lot, a lot of YouTube and also quite a bit of camera use too, which does really burn through the battery, especially when recording in 4K 60 FPS. Gaming now, this is Shadowgun Legends, probably one of the more demanding games you can get on Android. So I've got it set to the very high setting and also have it set to 60 frames per second. I've noticed that it's playing smoother, as you'd expect, than my Huawei P30 Pro. That's because it's got the additional cores here with the GPU. So it's got 16 cores now instead of 12 that we have in the Kirin 980. Now you occasionally see a few little stutters, but the performance is very smooth, very good, but not quite as good as the ASUS Republic of Gamers Phone 2 that I reviewed. That played this game super smooth really good. So my review wouldn't be complete without a look at PUBG. It's super smooth with those extra GPU cores. Now I wanted to show you that we've got this mode here that if you swipe from the left you've got a gaming mode with this little screen here so you can set and configure trigger buttons which I've already actually done. You've got game acceleration and there's also a mode there to uh, prevent accidental touches. So if I just get out of that I'll show you tapping at the top here I've got that configured to be my trigger which works well and when you zoom in of course with the sights very good performance here, no lag, and every PUBG gamer out there I think is gonna be really pleased with the performance we have now. It just seems to be a little bit better. You do notice it versus, say, the P30 Pro. So let's talk about audio quality. Now, the voice calls are using an earpiece that's behind the screen. Now, it does sound perfectly fine to me, but you miss out a little bit on the highs and the mids compared to earpieces that are a normal speaker. So we don't have a 3.5 minute headphone jack, Using an adapter, the audio output quality sounds good, it's loud, it's clean, it's clear, and really what more do you want? So we've got a loudspeaker down the bottom, and I believe that the behind the screen speaker is also adding a little bit because you can feel vibrations from it, you don't really hear it too much, and it also resonates quite a bit, the speaker within the housing of the phone, but it does sound loud, there's a bit of bass. I'll give you a sample now of the loudspeaker on the Mate 30 Pro. So before I get onto the camera samples, I will just quickly show you the application. It is straightforward, so you can see we've got control there of which lens we are using. You can just adjust this manually, the slider, or tap it. So if you tap there on wide, we go onto the ultra wide new 40 megapixel sensor. Five times, that's using three times optical and two times digital to get that, achieve it. That's the three times, of course. Portrait mode, night mode, aperture, pro mode here. Uh, you've got controls of the shutter rate, exposure, ISO, and the metering as well too if you wanted. Video, we now have 4K in 60 frames per second, which is great that they've got this option, but it will never actually hold an average of 60 frames or close to 60 frames per second, as you see with my samples now. Swap over to the front facing cameras right there. You've also got some other options on this side too. And if I quickly show you on the more setting, this is where you'll find the slow-mo and other settings there you can see too as well. So slow-mo, here's a very quick sample. Now I find this to be absolutely terrible. Very disappointing, clearly I am I need a firmware update. It must be that the units they sent out to all the reviewers are on a different firmware because this is absolutely shocking. It's flashing away. This was shot with very good studio lights on and it looks like VGA quality even though it is 1080p, believe it or not. But here are those samples now from the cameras. 
Now with the front facing camera we get 1080p only unfortunately. It has very good electronic image stabilization when it is working. Sometimes it doesn't work for some reason. It happens about one or two times out of ten that it doesn't work. So it's got a little bit of rolling shutter when you move around here. The crop is good. Audio quality again is very good here. So overall this is excellent 1080p quality. I like the stabilization. I just wish we had a 4K option as well because when you look at for example Samsung and other manufacturers they've got 4K with the front cameras as well which would be good. So this is the rear camera, this is 4K, 30 frames per second. Now there's a quick sample that I put in because even though this is just 30 frames per second, this video, that you can see here that it gets really choppy, this footage. Now this was during my camera comparison using 4K, 60 frames per second. It suddenly dips down in the frame rate and starts dropping huge amounts of frames and the footage looks really poor and stuttery as you can see it happening now and really not good at all. It's almost like we've got beta software with the camera. I think the review units have a different firmware. Now as you can see as I'm panning around we're getting those jerky sort of stutters when you pan to do with the exposure and the electronic image stabilization. I'm currently in the ultra wide and I've noticed that when you swap over now so I'll go in over to the one times camera it can be a little bit awkward to do this you sometimes just go far too f there we go this one times now you see the transition where it flashes and i've noticed that now the electronic image stabilization is very good it's not quite as good as the ultra wide so when i put my hand up the focus sometimes struggles there we go we've got a lock now focus transition is good but the focus I found with the Mate 30 Pro happens to be better than the Mate 30. I do have a camera comparison, so make sure you check that out between both of those phones. So I'll go over now to the three times. Again, as it's a little bit awkward to do this. You can see slowly zooming in. This is now just digital, and you'll see the transition. There we go, over to three. Right now, the electronic image stabilization is working, but sometimes it bugs out, and it doesn't work, and then it's all shaky. Audio quality is very good. Very happy with the audio here, good bit rate, nice and clear, and I found the audio to be better on the Mate 30 Pro than the Mate 30. Right, I'm normally drag the ending out here, but I won't okay with this one. I just want to say that the hardware is definitely there. It's the software that's letting Huawei down. And that's not, of course, talking about the huge problems they have with Google Play services having Google Play Store. Now, there's workarounds for that. Some people are actually quite happy there's no Google on there because they just say, oh, I don't want Google anyway. So then go for the phone. But I would say hold off for now. Wait for, of course, the firmware updates because the 4K video is shocking the slow motion video at the moment is shocking now there will be i'm sure huawei fanboys in the comments posting right now that you know i'm on a beta firmware that's not a released phone in fact this is a retail phone on the retail firmware you can pick this up today in china this is an import from china and this is the exact state it is in okay so the hardware i said is there it is really good now if you own a p30 pro like myself i've got it right here or the mate 20 pro this is not a huge step up, this phone, okay? I believe a lot of people like myself will be very disappointed because you get it and you go, oh, hang on, this isn't really a big enough increase in terms of performance, in terms of what you're getting. 
uh, over the P30 Pro, for example, and that really leaves you with buyer's remorse going, ooh, you know, so really think long and hard because it's not a huge step up performance-wise. It seems almost exactly the same. The camera software isn't mature as I've shown you. So we'll have a full review of the Mate 30, Okay, that's gonna be in the channel probably next week sometime towards the end. I'm very busy at the moment. There's also a camera comparison between both of these. Do check that out and I hope to see you back in the channel. If you are new here, please do subscribe for more videos from me. Bye for now.